For more perspective on the story, I'm joined by Adrian Salbucci, an international consultant and author. So we saw violent scenes on the streets of the Greek capital last night. Looks like the people, uh, many of them feel like they have nothing to lose at this point. How far do you think this public anger can go? Well, I can tell you from experience, because what we're seeing now uh, taking place in Greece and Athens is so similar to what took place in my country of Argentina in 2001 and 2002, which is so similar to what the scenes we have seen in Brazil in 1999, in Mexico in 97, with the Southeast Asian Tigers, in Spain, in Italy, in Portugal. It seems that this is basically an, a model that is being followed in country after country, and always with the same sort of media coverage, at least from the Western media. I feel that there are are two key questions that have to be asked. First of all, who runs Greece? Is it the Greek people or is it the IMF, the European Central Bank, the European Union, Germany and the private bankers? And I ask this question because Prime Minister, President Lucas Papademos is a member of the Trilateral Commission, which is one of the power groups where you also have the top brass members, the top brass of Deutsche Bank, Dresdner Bank, Santander Bank, Goldman Sachs, Citicorp, Lazard Frères, HSBC, JP Morgan. And so you figure, will Mr. Papademus uh, prioritize the interests of the Greek people or the interests of the bankers? We have a similar situation in Italy where Mario Monti is the European president and chairman for the Trilateral Commission. And the second question, Matt, is who is all this money owed to? I mean, this sovereign debt crisis, as I said, happens time and again. Are bankers that stupid that they always make the mistake of lending too much money to countries? And are governments that stupid that they take loans much more than they can pay back? Or I insist, is this part of a model where like Shylock's pound of flesh, the unpayability of these sovereign debts is later used to control entire countries? Now, the parliamentary elections due in April, but with the current coalition government set to make written commitments to implementing these reforms, do you think a new government will have no choice on how to deal with the debt crisis? Well, a new government will have no choice because it will probably be a new government that is in one way or another subordinated to a global power master, so to speak, to the money powers. Because in a way, all governments, whether it's in Greece, in Italy, in Spain, in the UK, in Argentina, all governments today have two choices. They can either government for the people, which means governing against the bankers, or they can govern to favor the bankers, and that means that they will be always be against the people. And it's so sad to see the same sickening scene time and again. Protesters taking to the streets, they are repressed by the police with tear gas, they throw uh, stones, somebody gets injured, hundreds get injured, somebody always ends up getting killed, and I always figure that it's the poor people on the streets fighting the police who are also poor, and I always wonder if there aren't cigar-smoking bankers perched on the 50th floor boardrooms looking down at these horrific scenes and just laughing at it all. But you mentioned a pattern earlier, and you mentioned a pattern, you said this happened in Argentina, you mentioned that this happened in the Asian tiger economies. At the same time, eventually, they did get back on their feet, and if history is, to, if the pattern holds up to uh, what you say, especially including the, given the current stability, relative stability in Argentina, and the, uh, the potential that we're seeing now from these Asian tiger countries, that eventually things do get better. I mean, do you think this can continue following that pattern? This is different because Greece is within the Eurozone, so there are other interests which will ensure that Greece does not leave it, because one of the solutions that any country has is to work with its own currency. However, Greece does not have its own currency. Its currency is handled from Frankfurt on Main at the uh, European Central Bank. One real option that a sovereign Greece does have is to revert back to the drachma, just like a sovereign Spain should revert back to the peseta, and a sovereign Italy should revert back to the uh, lira. However, all of this uh, it can only happen if they have real sovereign governments in power. And I think that what this system does is it ensures that whoever governs the country, as we saw with Mr. Papademos and we're seeing with Mr. Monti, who are both trilateral commission members, they will always, unfortunately, end up governing in favor of the bankers and ensuring that government will bail out the banks and not the people. In a way, these people remind me a little bit of allowing a monkey to take care of a banana shop. You know, the, you, the, the projected results can be, can be expected. All right, Adrian Salbucci, international consultant and author, thanks for your insight. Thank you.